Hey, Young Culture family. My name is Greg Molina. I have a hot chocolate. And today, we're talking the post-apocalypse. Let's get started. So today we're talking about designing post-apocalyptic costumes, whether it's for your low-budget short film, or for Wasteland Weekend or a costume for Halloween. If you're looking for tutorials on how to make your clothes look weathered, I'll put some video links somewhere in the description on how to do that, because I'll be talking about that later on in the video. Throughout this video, we'll be dividing the designs into categories and subcategories. The first two categories are whether you want a realistic look, such as The Walking Dead or Last of Us, or something more along the lines of a Mad Max style, more unrealistic fantasy costume design. If you're on a low budget like myself, this is the option you're probably going to go with more often than not, seeing as usually costumes made from The Walking Dead, Last of Us, and mediums such as those are more designed from regular clothing and household items that we all have. For instance, the costume design in The Walking Dead is very simple in a sense where there's no exotic leather, goggles, or any other sort of odd thing that doesn't really belong, and there's not much on the characters that's on there for the sake of looking cool. Like I said, if you're on a low budget, this is the option you'll probably be going with because it's the best one and honestly the cheapest. You can go to a thrift store, buy clothing, rip it up for little to no expense, and you can make a lot of outfits for very, very little money. Let's move over to the other category, the more fantastical post-apocalyptic world. Now, if you look at a movie like Mad Max, the costume design is practical in a lot of areas. But in other areas, such as the main villain in the film, his mask with the teeth and the tubing and all the eye makeup is a little more fantastical, not exactly practical, it's just more there to look awesome, cool, and scary. This option could get a little more expensive, but you can also do things for very cheap, with a lot of spare parts, scraps, stuff like that. Unless you're thinking about doing some sort of dystopian Hunger Games future type thing, then it'll come out to a lot more money. Alright, now that we've established our theme, whether it's more realistic or a more fantasy vibe, we need to decide the time and setting, as in the environment, weather, and date our character is set in. What's the weather like in your post-apocalypse? Is it a desert wasteland where it's really, really hot? Or is it a snowy forest where the slightest bit of exposed skin is prone to frostbite? Is your post-apocalypse set in 2015, 4015, or hell? even after World War II. What country, city, or state is your character exploring? This could determine a number of things, including style and clothing choice. There are limitless possibilities, so you want to hone in on exactly what you're going for. Look up the best type of clothing to survive in whatever weather or element you're thinking of. Surviving in late fall or winter? Focus on layers, face protection, boots, gloves, hats, things like that. If it's the desert, focus on thinner layers or less clothing, but keep in mind your character probably has to cover his or her face from sandstorms and stuff like that. Is your character in the really far future? Think about some of the costuming choices. Fashion may be completely different in the world you're setting, or your character could even be some sort of futuristic guard or police officer and wear some sort of funky uniform like we see in the Hunger Games or Judge Dredd or something like that. Okay, so we got our basic clothing set up, aka a top and a bottom layer. Let's talk about colors, then we'll move on to accessories. In general, the post-apocalypse is considered a bleak, dark thing. Bright colors aren't really gonna cut it. Your color palette should be things like browns, olive green, tans, blacks. The only time light colors would really work is if maybe your character was in a hazmat suit or his uniform for the army he's in required it, such as like a light blue, light yellow, or a white. White could also work in the winter, for a better camouflage. If we look at a lot of different examples, you'll mostly see the same bleak, drab color palette in a lot of post-apocalyptic films. This is in part due to color correction, but also due to costume design. A bright, dry-fit Nike or Under Armour t-shirt isn't really gonna cut it for this type of world. Number one, it won't help you survive, and really, does it look that cool? I don't think so. Moving on to accessories. This is where you get to have a lot of fun with your costume. These are all the little details that go into making your outfit what it is and completing and selling the look. So, choose wisely. You can decide on your accessories by examining a few things. What your character needs to survive, what he or she does, 
and what circumstances he or she is set in. For instance, is your character in a nuclear fallout? Is there still radiation around? Maybe they have a gas mask, maybe a Geiger counter on them, maybe hanging somewhere on their person would be a cool addition. In most survival and post-apocalyptic scenarios, protective gear is the way to go. So in addition to your top and bottom layer, you'll want to have gloves, boots, masks, anything that protects your skin while doing physical things. Whether you're protecting it from the cold, harsh desert landscape, or a nuclear fallout, they're all important. Is there some sort of deadly virus or disease in the air that when your character breathes it, they'll get injured? Well, then maybe you might want to consider a gas mask. If you're out in the desert or your post-apocalypse really has nothing to do with disease that kills when breathed in, a gas mask won't really make much sense, and you'll want to avoid that cliché. Your character most likely needs a backpack, especially if they're traveling by themselves or on the road. Pay attention to what's in the backpack as well. How big or small it is, all of this has to do with your character and the circumstances they're set in. He or she could have a bag of personal things, food, hand warmers, weapons, anything like that, or your character could be some sort of post-apocalyptic merchant who carries around a huge traveling bag and distributes things by trading with others. Decorate the bag, put cool pins on it, make metal stuff hang off of it. Try to keep from getting too outrageous because some things are just there for the sake of looking cool instead of actual functionality, which is important. Random spikes and bits of leather where they don't really belong are kinda cool when used right, but if they're randomly thrown on there, they're gonna look kinda tacky. Does your character need to cover their face? Get a tactical smog, smooth, smog, I don't know how to pronounce it. A baklava, a pair of goggles, something that's gonna protect your character's face and eyes from whatever he or she is concerned about. In your version of the post-apocalypse, did a nuclear missile strike and destroy everything around this character? Well then, make it look like he or she had to scrounge around and scrap for their accessories. Bits of shirts, pants, or any type of cloth are a great way to make fashion gloves and face wraps for your character. Bullet belts, holsters, sheaths, all cool things to put in your character that not only add an extra functionality, but add better detail that helps sell your character. So, we've got the proper clothes for the environment, our color palette, and accessories to match. There are just a few questions to ask yourself before you're ready to go. Number one. Do my clothes look worn enough? If your character's out here surviving, chances are their clothes are gonna be tattered, beaten up, and dirty. If your clothes look brand new and pristine, it probably won't look that legitimate. Unless your character just put on a fresh pair of clothing. But shh, that comes later, don't spoil it. Would my character realistically survive in the world he or she is set in? Take a look at your character and their costume. Throw them in the setting you plan on throwing them into, and see if they survive. It's that simple. If your character dies because of lack of resources or protection, then you need to draw up a new design or improve on the one you have. And number three, does everything look cool? I know it's kind of a silly question, but when you get down to it, that's usually the main point of your character's costume. Does it look good enough? Does it look cool? Does your character emulate what you want them to emulate? What your character wears says a lot about them, and as much as we tell other people not to do this, we judge books by their covers. Make sure the first impression is a good one. So if you followed all these tips and asked yourself all these questions, I think you're ready to go. But before we go, I just want to say a couple things. First off, I'll probably be following up with a video next week to talk about weapons for the post-apocalypse. So if you want to see that, subscribe below. If you have your own ideas about post-apocalyptic costume design, or if there's anything in this video that I missed, feel free to comment down below. Lastly, in the description, you'll find links to not only my social media, but other videos that are going to help you out with this topic, including how to weather and make your clothes look post-apocalyptic, and websites where you guys can get inspiration for your own costumes. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Abaddon Tips. My name's Greg, and we'll see you guys next week.